In this video, I'm going to talk about APIs and the data formats in particular that you're likely to get when working with APIs, specifically JSON and XML. Now, sometimes um, APIs will give you an option to specify what format of data you're going to get in response to your query. In this example, for example, on, on They Work For You, um, you can supply an output parameter and you can specify whether that's um, JSON, J-S-O-N, or XML, or even CSV. But a lot of APIs will simply supply the results in one format, and the most common format is JSON. Uh, JSON is spelt J-S-O-N, it stands for JavaScript Object Notif uh, Notation, but um, uh, it's normally pronounced JSON. And both these data formats, JSON and XML, have a tree structure. What this means is that unlike a spreadsheet or a table where you have rows and columns, um, it, has a, it starts with a, a single branch and then it branches out into sub-branches and then into possibly further branches still. For example, if you had data about books in a, a XML or JSON format, it would start with the books branch at the base that might split off into say a hundred different branches each for one of a hundred books and then each of those 100 books would branch off again for the author and for the publisher and so on and the author branch might branch off further still if there were more uh, pieces of information about in each individual author in a spreadsheet obviously you would have one row for each book and one row for the author for the publisher of the author country, the publisher country, the author name, and so on. Um, but in these data formats, XML and JSON, are not like that. You can read more about this tree structure in the link in this slide um, on Moodle. Um, but broadly speaking, that's all you need to know, that they follow this tree structure. Here's an example with XML. Um, this can be a bit intimidating when you look at it in your browser. Um, we'll come on to how to convert it to something a bit less intimidating later. But what we can see here, and, and this is, by the way, in a browser like Firefox or Chrome, they tend to deal with XML a lot better. I would not recommend looking at an XML file in um, Safari or any Microsoft browsers. Make sure you use Firefox or Chrome. And what's quite good about um, Firefox in particular is that it will actually indent the data so you can see the structure. So at the top here we can see the main trunk of the data which is um, establishment or FHRS establishment. That's got everything inside it. There's then two branches from that, the header branch and the establishment collection branch. Inside the header branch we've got a date, a count and some sort of return code. Um, and then that branch is closed so we've got backslash header in XML, so a backslash, like in HTML, indicates the end of a particular tag, or in this case, a particular branch. Within establishment collection, we have establishment detail as another branch in that, and then within that branch, we've got a whole bunch of pieces of information in there. So that's what XML looks like. And JSON, however, if you open that in a browser, will look really intimidating. It will look like this, just a block of text and code. For that reason I would really recommend uh, installing an extension in your browser uh, called JSON View or a, a similar JSON um, prettification extension. What this basically does is when you're looking at a JSON file it will um, format it so it's much easier to look at. This is what it will look at uh, look like once you've got it installed. Again like in the XML example, this time we have some indenting that helps us see the structure of the data. So in this case, we've got two branches at the top, a status branch and a result branch. Within result, we've got a whole bunch of branches, pieces of information about this, this is about a postcode. And then the final branch, codes, goes into some more branches within that, another eight or so with some different in, uh, pieces of information. 
So that's one uh, good reason to use the JSON view extension to install that. This address at the bottom, by the way, is where you will is what we're looking at. It's a page of JSON, and that's what it looks like in the browser once you've installed that extension. So just going back to those two languages, XML and JSON. Um, XML, as you've seen, uses triangular brackets, chevrons, as they're sometimes called, uh, best viewed in Chrome, and um, very similar to HTML, looks like HTML. HTML is based on XML, essentially, and um, you've got this branch structure, as I mentioned before. So within books, you might have a book branch and then another book branch. Within each of those book branches, you might have an author and a publisher branch. And within each of those, you might have a country branch. So this is the country of the publisher. This is the country of the author. JSON um, uses pairs and it uses curly brackets. So in this case, we, we would have a category and then a colon and then the value of that category. This is very similar to the key value pairs that I mentioned in a previous video. And again, you can have branches within branches. So here we've got another category. There should be a colon here actually. And then um, some, um, let me try and refresh that in a moment. And see if it fixes it. Um, and then we've got uh, some more. There should be some curly brackets at the end there. Um, nested categories within that. So often the categories will stay the same, but the values will change for different branches. It's much better if I show you a particular example. So here we have um, a name, and the name is city town. In another branch, there might be a different name, but the word name will always be the same in each branch. Likewise, geo, we have that goes into a latitude and longitude. So we're going into another branch here. They have some values. And then at the bottom, we have another branch with the um, an administrative piece of information. Now, um, so these, these names, administrative, long, latitude, longitude, these are pretty much arbitrary. They can be whatever the person has decided to call them. Um, but one thing to notice here is that strings are in quotation marks and numbers are not. In XML, you don't get that happening. But in JSON, you do get that difference between strings and numbers. And the, the labels uh, here are not in strings, you'll notice, not in quotation marks. So JSON uses these curly brackets and it uses pairs of pieces of information with a colon in between. Now, once you get any of that data, you can actually convert it uh, manually. There are a number of converters online. Just Google JSON CSV converter, and you can uh, convert individual JSON files to CSV. And the same with XML. You can find converters for those as well. So if you do find data in that format, you can convert them using these tools. However, um, most of the time, when you're querying an API, you're going to actually be querying um, a number of different things. So you might ask for information on a number of different postcodes, for example, or companies or keywords, and you're gonna get a number of different JSON files or XML files in return. So you're probably going to need coding. And that takes me on to the key points here. First of all, um, we've talked about the two common data formats that you're going to get data from APIs in JSON and XML. Um, because of that, you're going to need to know what they are, how they're structured, and how to deal with them. And the first thing to remember is that they have this tree structure, which is different to uh, normal tables and spreadsheets. That means you're going to have to probably convert it in some way to put it in a format that you can work with, some sort of table. Now, you can use online converters to do this with individual files, but most of the time in data journalism, you're going to need to use coding to import the files, the JSON or the XML, to convert it into a table structure and then to export it as some sort of CSV file or to perform some analysis first. 